What is up you guys? It's me, a girl in Casey. How you doing? So because all I watch on YouTube are book videos and car crash compilations, YouTube doesn't really know how to like advertise to me. I mean, every now and then I'll get some audible ads or once in the blue moon, a book of the month ad. But lately I've been getting ads for this app called Likewise. And it starts off really interesting. Like, hey, you just finished a book and you don't know what you want to read next? We'll recommend you something. From what I understand, you get on the app, you put in all the books you've had read and the genres you're interested in, and through that, it recommends you things. You can also do TV shows, movies, and podcasts, but I don't care about that. And because I'm always indecisive and would rather have someone else tell me what to do and what to read, I've decided I'll let this app pick out what I'm reading this month. I'm gonna get on the app, Duh. How can this video happen without getting on the app? Pick out my past reads and my favorite genres so the app will at least know what kind of a creature I am. I'm gonna try to put in as much of the books I have read into the app because I want it to give me a wide array of recommendations because I want to get these books from the library because I don't want to spend money. And I'm not really hoping for like popular hyped up books. I want some really obscure recommendations that I've never ever heard of. So I'm going to switch over to a screen recording on my cell phone and I'm going to take you guys into the app. So enjoy. Okay so real fast I had no idea that screen recording also lets you use your microphone at the same time. So like consider me impressed. I am such a grandma. I'm like what is this newfangled technology and how does it know my voice and name? Earth year, female. Yeah I don't want to give you my phone number. I mean you're you're being a little too forward with this sir. We've only just met. I'm gonna skip that and move this thing over here. Okay we don't care about TVs and podcasts. We're going straight to books. Ooh okay so I get to pick all this cool stuff. Immediately, I see some whodunits, so yes. Fantasy, and then if you click fantasy, see, it like broadens into subgenres. So give me all of that. Do I want romance? Ooh, no, never. Ooh, teen romance, that's even worse. Come of age. Give me that comedy. Yes. Wait, there's, yes. Shocking. Psychological. Mm, I don't really care about spies. Mystery. Science fiction. Give me all this. Uh, except historical fiction, yuck. Slasher, paranormal, some true crime. Ooh, I want to cry because I hate myself and I will put myself through the ringer. What's next? Lastly, choose 10 that you like. It will help us find recommendations that you'll love. Okay, so I'm only gonna click the ones that, I that I've that i read. Like, I really want to read Gone Girl, but I haven't yet. And I read Girl on the Train and I hated it. And Woman in Cabinton. Okay, I love Agatha Christie's Awesome Lady. Very awesome lady. Rebecca all the way. I have the alienist. I need to read that. I want to read Red Dragon because Hannibal Lecter scares me. There's Agatha Christie again. I'm not even keeping track. I'm just going to click everything. Like, what are these genres? Where's the fantasy? I like that junk. I have both little fires everywhere and all the light we cannot see. Okay. Technically, I have not read Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I read the Sorcerer's Stone. So I'm going to skip that. Ooh, the help. Love it. One of my favorites. I'm gonna skip all this self-help because I am perfect. Just bought the silent patience. Why is there a naked lady on my phone? Love Donna Tart. Donna Tart all the way. Oh my gosh. Made me cry. Cersei was... It was meh. Not my favorite. Hunger Games? Yes. Wait a second. We're just like repeating things here. Oh my gosh. I hated Paper Towns. And looking for Alaska. Red Queen. Oh, it's been a I hated that tune. Okay, and we were liars. We're getting into the books I've not liked. Ready Player One, fantastic. The Hobbit, <laughs> boring. Oh my gosh, no. Stay off my phone, Haruki. Get it? I, I want another page. We didn't get to the fantasies. Can I just do like a broad genre search? What is this? I guess not. I don't think I like this app. Okay, we're gonna put in some Aragon. Yes, yes. Uh, where's Eldest? Perfect. I'm just gonna like every single one of these. Name of the Wind, because I'm rereading it right now. Boom. Ooh, Assassin's Apprentice. The best. Ooh, Pearl S. Buck. Haven't read that book, but, but I loved. What's it called? Mm, the Good Earth. Speaking of that. The Good Earth. The Gold Fent. I can't spell, obviously. Just randomly putting in some of my favorites. You know what, that'll have to do, because I'm drawing a blank for everything else. Okay, personalizing for you, even though you didn't let me get you the fantasy books. So how can you really get to know me, Mr. Likewise? Welcome to Likewise. Check out the books we found for you. Come back every day for fresh, personalized recommendations. Okay, there's me. Say hi. Your taste profile improves every time you rate or save something. 
noise. Okay, get off my thing. Okay, tap the check mark to mark items you've seen or read. Dragon Bones by Lisa. Get off. All right, so no idea, no idea what this is, but we are just going to like mass save because hey, it knows me to the core. Oh no, gosh, you you don't know me. Be gone, Sunborn. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, yes. All the way. I read it. Might. Who's this chick? I'm looking for a quirky enemies to lovers fade the black romance book. Maybe has fantasy and magic? But fade the black doesn't sound fun. Like, go away. The first war. Wait, what the heck is an eldest omnibus? What did I accidentally like? Oh well, just save it. Okay, I have this book. So we're gonna skip it. Oh, uh, read that. Loved it all the way. Rothfuss, write the third book. I don't want podcast. I want books. So is that it? Like I only get like those recommendations? What, what else is on here? I'm just gonna say it. I don't like any of these covers. First War, young adult action adventure superheroes. Is that like the genre or like the actual title? Look at all those keywords. Is this like a dating website where you can only get like five likes a day? Name. Okay, we're gonna have to spread this out over the course of a few days, it looks like. So, I'll check back in tomorrow. And I'll just make like a big comp compilation of me liking these things. Likewise just sent me a little alert telling me to check out the best new books hitting shelves in April. So, oh my gosh, Empire of Pain? I don't know what this is about, but I'm gonna save it. Yes, I saw Thriller. That's nice. Is that the sequel to you? Because I have the first book. Give me that Thriller. Okay, so for about a whole week, I've just been like accepting everything the Likewise app has thrown at me, disliking all the ones I've had read and not liked, just so it gets a better clue about who the heck I am and what I'd like to read. Because gotta say, I was not impressed by the first bunch of books they threw at me, but it makes sense. It took a little bit more time, but I finally got like a good batch of books that I'm ready to see if my library has. Oh, and right here. This is my, you know, this is my, my name. If you want to follow me, I got one follower. So over on the saves tab right here, I have everything the app has recommended me. Thrillers, anything with a dragon on it. So what I'm going to do is go to my library's website and see what books it has that matches with this list. Then, because it won't be fun if I just pick the three books that I most want to read. I mean, it'll be fun for me, but I also like making me suffer. So whatever books my library has, I'm going to put it on one of those wheel generators and then do three spins. And whatever three books that wheel lands on, that's what I gotta read. Ooh, I'm excited for this because I got a lot. So let me get started on making that wheel thing and I'll get right back to you. And boom, alrighty y'all, we're all ready. And I think I remember mentioning like in the beginning of the video, Video that I kind of wanted like unhyped books well that ain't gonna work anymore but I managed to get a pretty good amount yeah it took like 15 minutes to put all these in the little wheel but ain't it colorful I got like a total of 18 thingies dragon eyes book thief majesty's dragon miss born oh like cannot see christine gone girl and you don't need me to read the rest of that so let's just go on and see what I'm destined to read oh my gosh it turned purple and orange for a second that was beautiful oh thank goodness it didn't land on a court of thrones and thrones I don't know a court of thorns and roses yes all right we got the book thief Making a note of that, because I will forget it. I've seen that book, like, ever since middle school, childhood. has always been popping up in my periphery. But now it's going to be in the forefront. Okay, we've got 17 left. Oh, that's handy. It tells you the results, too. Good website, good website. Okay, what's next? What's next? Ooh, 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 okay. So I haven't read any Stephen King yet, so this is going to be fun. I've always wanted my first Stephen King book read to be Pet Cemetery, because oh my gosh, I saw that movie when I was a little girl and it scared the heck out of me, but this would do too. And our final one, here we go. Well, Stephen King, <laughs> nicely played, good sir. Hmm, you know what? Let's do another. I don't want two Stephen King books. I want, uh, like a nice menagerie of authors. And a book I've never heard anything about before. Perfect. Alright, so two Stephen Kings. One pretty much a classic book. The Book Thief. I know people love it. I think it has, like, a personification of death in it. And we got this random book. Lovely. Alrighty. So let me go ahead and put these on hold. I already have a library book right now that I'm currently reading and it's boring the heck out of me. It's called The Other Emily by Dean Coots or whatever. But as soon as I finish that, these are going right on the TBR and then I'm going to vlog and see 
if this app knows what I like to read. Yo guys, I got my three books from the library. I'm still waiting for the book. I get my R's and my W's mixed up all the time. I'm still waiting on the book to show up from the library. I got it on hold, but it has to ship from another library. Before I dive into horror, because I think I've only read like two horror books in my life before, both were really good, so I'm kind of guessing that's my jam. But I wanted to ease into the book beat first because it's always been like on the periphery of my childhood, like I said before. And okay, to be honest, I do not like historical fiction, especially set in Nazi Germany. Just basically anything from that era has been... <laughs> I want a dragon, but I do like that it does throw in a supernatural element by having Death narrate the book because our main girl is Liesel, I think, and it's about her being like pushed off to a foster family by her mom. I'm about 200 pages in right now, and even though she's technically the main character, it's Death that's following her around and narrating it. And he likes that she's the book thief. She's stolen like two books right now, especially, especially from like Nazis book learnings and wants to see where this goes and I like that how he's very he's introduced as a fun loving character but he also like hints about his ominous nature as death a lot too he's entertaining he was in a a lot of the first first part of the book but like as the story has progressed he's really taken a back seat so Lysol however you say her name Liesel can have her time to shine which I get pretty good so far and I don't know because I like to read two books at once and I don't know what Stephen King book I'm gonna read yet so I put it on a poll on YouTube so people can vote if I read Christine or The Shining and I gotta I gotta talk about this book cover how does this scream horror okay You've got this Jesus looking kid with the halo and the weird eyes. This fluffy, bushy, tiger lion dog thing with a cow in the background. This guy with no eyes and this woman. Fine looking woman, but I ain't scared of her. And it's green. Green's not a horror color, we know this. This one's fine. I've actually seen bits of this movie. Never seen any, I haven't seen the Shining movie. So that's gonna be interesting. But I do know there's actually two Shining movies. Apparently Stephen King hated the Kubrick version, so he made his own like mini-series one. And from what I know, that one was very boring. But as soon as I know which Stephen King book I'm gonna read, I'll let you know. Until then, I'm just gonna keep reading The Book Thief, and I'll pick up when I get the poll results. <laughs> It's slightly sweaty Casey here. Beautiful day for a redhead freckled white girl to fry. So I'm 300 pages into The Book Thief and I will admit I was kind of bored because I think my problem with historical fiction for the longest time is that at least the ones I found aren't about, well, the big historical events that do happen. It's like those happen and our characters are a part of it, but they're always like on the sides. They're never a part of the action or the direct conflict. But now I think it's finally getting into my thick head that that's kind of the point. It's supposed to show like what regular people back then were going through. And that's how I was feeling about the book thief for a while. It's just this girl walking around this German town. And I was growing bored, but then Max showed up. Not gonna spoil who Max is, but Max basically comes in to move in with Liesel's family. And he's in a very isolated position. And so one day he just starts like ripping out the pages of the Mein Kampf, the, the book Hitler wrote. And he starts painting them over and he starts drawing his own story in it. And I love that the book actually included the illustrations and how it kind of portrayed Max as this bird looking man. Kind of to show like how outsidery he feels and how different he is from everyone else. But what really got me is that like the deeper you go in through this picture book that he created, you can see passages of mind cough bleeding in from the paint and I'm like whoa okay that okay that's when it really got me that was a really good piece of imagery I haven't really read books that have illustrations in it and I kind of miss it now because that actually got me really deep made me feel really bad for him meanwhile with my other read The Shining I'm a hundred pages in and oh my gosh like I feel like a lot of people it's hard for not everyone to know what The Shining is about because of the movie and it's Stephen King's one of his biggest books. But what I'm appreciating right now, 100 pages in, is just, we know Jack, the main father character. He, he has his issues, big, abusive issues. But it also portrays, well, the duality of his position. Cause like, okay, abuse, no excuse. But 
It does show how he really is repentant of it, especially when his drinking is involved. And he's just overcome with love for his son. And in that same vein, Wendy loves Danny so much. She's a little iffy about Jack, but she's definitely willing to give him another chance. And I like that it shows both sides, like the good points and their bad points at once makes them very human. I like that. I love Danny's point of view. I really do like reading from children's point of views in books, especially horror books. That just makes it, that just takes it to a whole other level. Although to be fair, there is a ton of explanation about how boilers work in the beginning. That was a little slow. Oh my gosh, we met uh, Halligan, Hallinan. I don't know, but I love him. And because my parents saw me reading The Shining. we I finally watched a movie last night with my family and uh, guys, it's hilarious. I could not take Jack Nicholson or whatever his face is seriously. I couldn't stop laughing through it, it was fun. So, so far, very enjoyable reads. Having a good time with both historical fiction and horror genres, which are so totally new to me. Oh, and also just speaking about LifeWise, LifeWise, LikeWise the app. So every now and then, like every five or so days, it'll text me or send me a notification that I got a new follower and said follower who would just have a regular name, not with a username, but like a regular person name. They would also send me a message saying, hey, can you recommend me this book? Or how you, how do you feel about this book? And it's just, the app is literally just spamming you to make you think that people like you. Because even though I got three notifications saying I have three followers, I still only have one and it's the app itself so i appreciate that thanks for making me feel loved moss always faces the north side of the tree okay so now i'm going south wait uh that that way's north uh okay um so that's south but what the heck yo so i finished you know not bad likewise not bad but not all the way good so first off, I really liked The Shining. Like, oh my gosh. It, it wasn't scary, not really. It, 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 in times it could have been unnerving, but if you know Stephen King, he tries to make something scary that cannot possibly be scary in any form, like hedge animals or fire hoses. That's not my phobia. But what was super good about The Shining that I loved was its writing style and how it was like a stream of consciousness you know, it was kind of chaotic, like it would just have random thoughts interrupting like a whole paragraph. But the more I think about it, the more I really like that. Because it's formulated in a way that is very similar to just how people think. Like we're looking at something, then we get interrupted by our own thoughts. So I loved that and I loved the characters. Because compared to the movie, like in the movie, you can't sympathize with Jack at all. He's just like crazy and evil right off the bat. Even when he's at the hotel interviewing, like the first scene he's in, he's just already creepy. But in the book, it just like layers on his character a lot. And wow, you, you got me feeling bad for him actually. As this man is trying to kill both his wife and his child. Well done, King, well done. My only issue with The Shining as a whole was that in paragraphs, it would just like randomly switch characters whenever it felt like, which I've always hated. I've always been a fan of cut to a new chapter or a cutscene, a paragraph break. Like paragraph, space, paragraph when a new character is taking over the point of view. But no, not in this one. You'll suddenly be Danny, then you'll be Wendy, then you'll be Jack. So that was a fantastic recommendation. Loved it. I've always been really hesitant about Stephen King ever since I learned about the existence of that scene in It. You know what scene I'm talking about. I'm like, why did you make that decision, Mr. King? But I also finished The Book Thief. I finished The Shining and The Book Thief on the same day. But with The Book Thief, <sighs> It's historical fiction, so I can't give it anything beyond a four because it just does not ever grab my attention. Not one point in this book was I consumed with the urge to finish it like I was with The Shining. So it gets a three for me. It got almost some tears for me. Like, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that because we're dealing with Nazi Germany, some people in this book are gonna die, and they do. And so we're towards the end of the book, and when they do die, it was handled so calmly and callously like oh just another day that had me tearing up but then our storyline which is going like this we have the people die right here then the plot just sort of wraps around does a loopy loop and then it continues on like the characters are alive describing the days right up until they die again then they die again then we continue on with the rest of the book so that kind of broke up the pacing to me i hate it when like timelines just skip out of sync 
I mean, you could have told us all of that before they all died. Because now we have all these heartwarming scenes after they die, and technically before they die, but I already know they're gonna die now because you already revealed the scene where they die. And now I can't get attached to what they're doing right now because I know you're going to die very soon. It's like after that happens, then the story just stops. I know we're at the ending, but then it just like time skips. Years later, we're looking at how Liesl is now and stuff like that. And it just seems like kind of a rushed way to end it. I call it a Sandlot ending, if you know what I'm talking about. Where like we stop being part of the main character's point of view and the narrator of the book is just like and this guy went off to go run a supermarket in his later years that's kind of how this book ends and i don't like it but you know not bad at all so now moving on to my next two books which is christine by stephen king again and this book called the rook i can't remember who wrote it some guy named daniel i think hello there it's me the editor and i just want to take a second to point out how weird this coat of arms thing is i mean look at this we got pulte guys the pokemon a guardian from Legend of Zelda, Cthulhu, and Count Bonicula. Terrifying. I'm already just 50 pages into the Rook, and it's very info dumpy in the beginning, like 50 pages in, because our main character, she just wakes up and she's standing in a field surrounded by all these dead bodies, but she doesn't know what's going on because she has amnesia. But apparently before she had amnesia, she knew she was gonna get amnesia for some reason, and she knew she was gonna be attacked because in like the pockets that she's wearing right now, her past self has left notes saying, hey, uh, people are out to get you. Here's my card. Uh, go get your hotel room. I'll explain things further on. So that's what's going on. Our girl, Miffany, that's her name, rhymes with Tiffany. She had to make the decision between, you know, going on a lamb, running from the people, the mysterious people who we don't know yet, who want to kill her, or she can step back into the previous Miffany's life. She tried to do option one, it did not go well. So she's trying to step back into the old Miffany's job as a rook and kind of pretend like she's never had amnesia and she doesn't know what the heck is going on. So it's her getting readjusted into this rook society, which because all of the world stuff ex is explained through the letters that are written to new amnesia Miffany. It is a lot of information all at once and it's very hard to keep track of what's what because it's all just dumped on my head all at once. But basically it's your typical secret society of people with superpowers. They do good, da da da, da but there is some corruption in it, blah blah blah. I'm still figuring it out. Our amnesia stricken girl is currently having a meeting with her partner, her co rook and this rook who I'm excited to meet apparently is one person but they control four bodies so that's interesting and I haven't started Christine yet but I'll let you know oh, when I do. Now let me tell you something as someone who never ever does vlogs doing a kind of vloggish style review is hard because I don't know what the heck I talked about in the last video that I recorded but y'all I finished all four books kinda I DNF'd the rook because you remember what I said about it being so info dumpy? Yeah, let me explain that further. I've realized I'm like one of those cone things, a funnel, you know, big hole on the top, little hole on the bottom. You pour water in through the big hole and it comes out in a narrower condensed stream through the tinier hole. I ain't like that. I'm a funnel flipped upside down. If you info dump on me, all that water it has just a little tiny baby hole to go through. I'm not going to retain anything, just like with college. So even though we have like pages and pages of letters from old pre-amnesia Miffany to post-amnesia Miffany detailing everything we need to know about the world in this book. Nothing sticking. I don't know who the heck any of these people are. What this organization of the Rooks is doing, what their big goal is, a bunch, like a butt ton of characters just got introduced all at once and I couldn't tell them apart from anything. A secret villain was introduced and we weren't supposed to know he, she, it, they was the villain, but it's so obvious that they are. So even though the amnesia trope is one of my favorite tropes, which is why I love Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, so much. I couldn't like this book, so I quit reading. I know, I am failure. But I finished also reading Carrie, not Carrie, Christine by Stephen King, which I am trash for Stephen King's writing style. I really, really am. But we gotta talk about something real quick. He is very, very good at writing characters. What he's not good at is writing women. <laughs> Let's take Wendy from The Shining and just the two girls, the sister and the girlfriend from Christine. Wendy is a hyper warrior and that's 
Cool. Honestly, she's me. Like, she overthinks everything. That was good. I really like that. But then, oh my gosh, what's the- I just finished this book. What's the girlfriend's name? Lay. It's Lay. Lay from Christine. I didn't get any personality from her except just like shrill anger because she's dating Arnie in Christine, the guy who owns the demon car Christine in this book. And oh my gosh, I haven't described this book yet. Yeah. So in the book Christine, we have these two high school best friends. We have Dennis. He's like, you know, the all-American boy. Football, good grades, all that fine stuff. He's got a girlfriend that he'll soon break up with, but life's going fine right now because he has his best friend, Arnie. Arnie is the opposite. He's a loser. He has just like this face filled with pimples. They call him pizza face. He only has Dennis as a friend. He has a very controlling mother and father. She just wants to put him right under their thumb. And he's never really done anything for himself yet. But then one day, Dennis and Arnie, well Dennis is driving with Arnie in the passenger seat. They go by this house and Arnie just sees this wreck of a car for sale. Like headlights out, rust everywhere, windows broken. But he, he falls in love. He's like, I want that car. I want it right now. And Dennis is like, bro, uh-uh, <laughs> that's a hunk of trash, man. But Arnie's like, let me out, let me out right now. I'm gonna go get it. So then Arnie goes up to the house where the trashy little car is parked at. And this old, very mean man named LeBay, he is not Bay, not one bit. He's just moldy. That's what I think about with him. He's just a moldy, festering, dirty man. He hates everyone, but he like sells the car to Arnie for mm, $300. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's kind of a ripoff because this car is literally trash. But Arnie falls in love and LeBay gives him the car. He's like, I'll oh, take good care of my girl, Christine. And Arnie's like, Christine? LeBay is like, yeah, that's the name of my car. You treat her right, she'll treat you right, bro. So Arnie gets the car all fixed up, but Arnie, doesn't get the car all fixed up. It seems to appear that the car Christine is fixing itself, like restoring its old and rundown parts. And it seems that something crazy is happening with Arnie as well. He's not the person he used to be before Christine. He's getting grumpier, grouchier. He's just a completely different person now. And that's when we start to see that the people who have done Arnie wrong in his life are starting to die from automobile related accidents. So what's going on? I think I just went off on a rabbit hole. I'm talking about the women in, in this book. Well, now that we know the backstory, eventually Arnie's new like personality gets him assertive enough, like more confident enough that he's able to get a girlfriend named Lay. Lay, like I said, she's just, she doesn't feel comfortable around this car, Christine. She feels like she's fighting with Christine for Arnie's attention. So she was really just like a air pocket for me. Not really a personality, but the way just Stephen Cre- Stephen Cream? Ew. The way Stephen King just describes the bodies of women and whenever they walk out of a room, ew. <laughs> Cause he, he's always mentioning their blossoming chest, blooming chest, budding chest, especially with the younger gals. I mean, do you know what blossoming, blooming, and budding means? Is what you think it means. Are you telling me that these girls' chests are opening up like the Demogorgon's mouth? That's what a blossoming is. Whenever they leave a room, they always flounce. That was a little bit cringy to read, not gonna lie. This book is pretty slow, cause like, obviously, the car Christine is evil. I mean, look at that skull, dead giveaway. And none of the real action horror elements happen, unless we're with the car. And the car doesn't do anything unless it's alone so no one can see it do anything. And it's rarely alone. So a lot of this book is just Dennis and Arnie, sometimes Arnie and Lay, sometimes Dennis with side characters trying to figure out what the heck is going on with the creepy car. It's just them talking. And as a character driven reader, that's fine with me because I really did like Dennis and Arnie together. But as a horror, was I scared? No. I'm feeling like a three and a half. This just like, two little things that I'm still like questioning about in this book because I like the characters. When the action was going, it was very, very good. When something horrifying did happen, it happened and it was good, but it was just very slow. And even though The Shining wasn't scary to me, it had a thrill factor to it. Christine did not because the thrill is a car. It's not that scary. Says a girl, who didn't get her driver's license till she was 21 because she was scared of cars. And so one of the things that I could not understand in this book is that it's heavily implied 
that Christine, the car, and Arnie, well, it's like Christine has the hots for him. That she's a jealous lover, she won't let anyone else have him, stuff like that. But, and I'm guessing this is a spoiler, so just skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to hear this part. But it's also implied and revealed that LeBay, the old, creepy, grungy old man who sold the car to Arnie, he is possessing the car. But the car still has that love relationship with Arnie. So is our old man ghost creeping on this high school kid? I think this book is trying to make commentary about how guys, stereotypical guys, are like obsessed with their cars in a unhealthy loving way. But it also wanted the creepy old guy possessing a car and sacrificing people to it so he can live with it when he died eventually. And together, those two things don't go together well, because now I have these questions. Because remember in the beginning, Arnie was just like immediately drawn to the car. LeBay wasn't in the car, he was in the house, I think. So why was Arnie snagged like right away? Was it Christine calling out to him or was it LeBay calling out to him? Is there some fan art out there of LeBay and Arnie? This horrifies me. Also, Speaking of The Shining, the dog thing horrifies me. And it was in the book. That was my biggest question in The Shining. Is the dog suit man in the book? And I don't know why this guy's in either the book or the movie. Stephen King just likes to throw things in there. And honestly, it's fine. They were really entertaining reads and I love them. I definitely want to read some more Stephen King's. I feel like I should either read Pet Cemetery or Carrie next. If you read any of those, let me know which one I should read next. But after trying out four books from this app, it went pretty well. I noticed it gave me really dark, depressing reads. Book Thief, uh, Nazi Germany, Persecution of Jews, Not Good Bro, two Stephen King horror books, uh, something called The Book that starts off with a field of people getting murdered. Immediately I knew my taste, bloodshed. And it was definitely something fun to try out and do. And I'm glad I finally, like, got started reading Stephen King. I just needed the right little kick to get me started. So thank you guys so much for watching. I guess gotta get these books back to the library because I ain't about those fines. No sir. And until next time, stay beady my bros.